Hi guys, this is that girl. Let me have a cup of coffee before we start there. Well, I gave a video about my game room. It's uh, only a one room that's 20 by 10, but I got a lot of junk in it. And I, I keep all this junk that I got because it's things that I remembered, primarily more the stuff when I was growing up. So what I wanted to do, um, I bit the first part of it. You can't go through it all in one video or it would take an hour and a half video. So I went through the first and I called it the uh, chapter one of my game room. I want to now go into the second part of my game room, Chapter 2. Now when you go into this one scene, um, that's maybe the, the biggest of the one picture I've got in the game room, where I've got so many little things in this part of my game room. And I wanted to show these things. I'm not going to go into every little item like I did on the first chapter. just want to show this to everybody so that, uh, see if you guys remember those too. And for a few, I will probably go into a little bit more detail that really meant a lot to me, although most of them did. Okay, now if you look at that, you'll see at the top I have a, a shelf and then in the bottom I've got a lot of cars, model cars, mostly all um, 118 scale. So I think we'll start with that first. Uh, I'm going to go into a little more detail on the bottom part of that scene. And let's look at those cars. Now first, before you start into it, look into the corner of the picture. And you'll see there's a little like rack of uh, a few cars. Those are cars mostly in the 40s. Now I don't remember many of those. Even when I was a kid, they've gotten too old and you didn't see old ones around. But I still like them. And uh, so I just have those there. Look on that rack where those cars are and you'll see uh, at the top I've got a an old uh, telephone there, 1940s type of uh, telephone. Um, I don't remember that one. I like the old telephones and I've got quite a few around in my game room. Um, don't remember seeing that one showing up, but I wanted to have it because I got some others. But I brought this up for one reason. When I come, people come in to look at the game room, uh, it's interesting, you know. If you walk around with any, well, first of all, I'm talking about mostly people that are in their 50s or older. When they walk into my game room, right away, first thing people see are the transistor radios. Those were a big thing when we were kids. And then the women will look over which one they like the best are the um, cameras and we'll go into some detail of that. The men like um, more stuff about uh, the, uh, well I'll show you what the women, the men like the most but it's not on this scene so we'll do that another time. But I brought this one up about the telephone. Because when I would go around, I mean, I especially I had a um, a guy came in and he's probably in his maybe 30s, mid 30s, and he wanted me to uh, come by and see his kids. Now he had two girls working there, and one was probably 10, and the other was probably eight. And I walked around, and of course, that was the most boring to them 
to go through my game room. Nothing made any sense to them. They had no interest in it at all. And uh, my friend was trying to show them certain things and they didn't care. Until they saw the telephone. And uh, <laughs> one of the kids said, what is that? And I said, that's, that's telephone. That's the way we used to make phones. Really? How do you do it? I told him I did the dial ring like that. Ring. Wow, that is cool. And they played with that phone for probably 15 minutes. All they did is just hit the ring ring, hit the numbers. They thought it was the coolest thing. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, now first, looking at that bottom part, you'll see the different cars I have. I won't go into too much detail of those because there's so many of them there, but mostly are them from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, I just love having my model cars around the game room, and you know, uh, I can have my car show anytime I want. It's always clean; don't have to work on it. Uh, so I love having them. So you can see the ones that I have on there, and just a couple that makes some sense to me that I needed to bring up. The one you'll see up in the top corner, left corner, there's a 1956 DeSoto. You know, that was part of Chrysler's um, companies that had uh, a few different, you know, they had DeSoto, they had uh, Plymouth, they had Dodge. And the first car that I can remember, uh, and this was my dad's car, uh, I guess it's the family car. And I don't remember too much of it. I think he sold that in, somewhere in the early 60s. I don't remember too much of that other than I can remember falling asleep in the back of that seat and he would carry me back into the house. <laughs> And that's the main thing I remember about that, that old uh, DeSoto. But I wanted to have that in my game room. Then you'll look at that over um, in the middle. There's uh, a uh, Comet. Uh, it's like a, like a same brand as the um, Ford had a uh, Falcon. And it's just the comet was the same thing. It was just on uh, Mercury had it. Well, anyways, the reason I like this thing when I was uh, probably 16, and there was three of us together, uh, we wanted to have a car. We didn't have a car yet, so we bought this one. This one didn't work. It was like 1963 um, comet. We got it for 30 bucks, and we each put 10 bucks in it, and we decided we're going to fix it. We know how to fix it. Well, how do we fix it? We have no idea to fix it, but we figured we could. And that's the way it is when you're 16 years old, you can do anything. Well, we played around with that thing for probably uh, a month or two um, on a summer. We would get pretty close to getting it running. You would Sometimes you'd hear it you know, kind of cough and almost get started, but never did. And then we eventually just got kind of tired of it, and and uh, I don't know how we got rid of the thing. But I don't remember what happened to that after that, but we never did do anything with it. We just lost our 10 bucks on it, and that was the end. <laughs> and then you see this other one over there. It's uh, I had, uh, this is when I, when I was coming out of the... Um, Philippines. I was still in the Air Force and I went and bought this, um, uh, I think it was 71 uh, Ford Maverick. And I had that for, I probably bought it maybe in uh, maybe 1975. And I had that for probably four years. I loved that thing. It was a, a V8. Um, and uh, I really liked that thing. And when I had a new job, um, it had no, it had 
it had no space in the uh, back seat. And I got a job where I was fixing uh, computers and at that time people used to have to fix them. They didn't just pop out cards and swap them out. So I had to have all kind of parts to fix, you know, a lot of transistors and all kind of stuff. Um, and I didn't have a space in the back of that, so I bought a little Toyota hatchback and I could put all kind of stuff in the back in there. And it worked great for me for working at that, that job. But it did not have the fun that I did out of that uh, Maverick. I should have kept that thing. Okay, so that's it. Those are different cars. You can just see what's there when you look at them. Um, now I'm going to move up to the top where I have my uh, shelf in there. And just little things pick up that just brings me back in memories. You see up on the top, there's that uh, uh, an, a uh, radio from probably the, the mid-50s. Um, I didn't have that particular model, but it sure gives that old 50s look. And uh, when I saw that once, I had to get that. And I've probably done about, um, I got into the old radios for a while, uh, for a couple of years. I was just uh, either um, fixing them or either restoring them. And I got tired of that for a while. But the ones that I liked the best, I still got probably about eight or nine hung around the game room. Okay, then um, as far as, uh, you know, we talked about the transistors. Um, everybody had to have a little one that you could stick in your pocket. But this one that I show here, this was the first one. Um, my sister was, she's older than me, and she got this for her birthday. And this was probably about 1960. And this was the first transistor radio that we saw our family had one. And uh, she's let me use it. And I think I used it more than ever she did. But I saw that once and had to grab one. And I thought, man, it's great. I wanted to have this, the game room. So I thought, oh, let me see if I can find another one. And I found another one. And I got that working and was going to send it to my sister for her birthday. I thought she'll really love having this. She got it. She says, I don't, I don't even remember having that transistor radio. <laughs> so I guess I probably used it more than she ever did. But, uh, but it was hers. And um, I remember that one. Okay, we look off to the side, um, the cameras. You know, of course, uh, back in the kids, in the 60s, 50s, 70s, uh, cameras were a big thing. And you had to have film and all that stuff. Uh, I won't go into all details of all of those, although every one of those are ones that I had. I uh, don't want the ones that I bought at that time, but it's the same model that I've gotten copies of since then. One except for this one I wanted to show. And this was the first one that I ever got. A, uh, a Kodak that uh, was the first camera that I ever got, probably from a birthday or something like that. And uh, had a lot of fun with that. Okay, now you also see the reason I have these things. Um, I like the... Uh, We've had some um, inventors that are just yeah, made our whole world different. And I wanted to have just those in my game room. Uh, one you'll see, of course, uh, uh, Thomas Edison. And he did the, the bulb light and all that stuff. Then I also had to have um, Albert Einstein. And then, uh, and Tesla. These are things I picked up at yard sales. And just every time I found one of those, I had to stick those in the game room. I just thought it really cool. Let me start for a second, have a cup of coffee.
Okay, then uh, you look over to the right, you'll see my uh, Juke Master, one of three. And then down the bottom, um, I picked this up at a Hamfest once. It's a um, like a replica of the old um, parking meters. Uh, this actually doesn't doesn't work. I mean, you can put money in there and it won't it won't do anything. It does play a radio in the back, <laughs> but it just looks cool. To bring back. Uh, you don't see too many of these anymore, at least not where I live. So I thought that was pretty cool to have. And then, do you remember the CB radio? Everybody had to have a CB radio for a while. And I was one too. And um, this one here, um, I didn't have this particular model, but it was enough for me to have one of these in my game room and so that I can uh, show that off. And what I like about all this stuff is no matter who I bring into my gamer, there's something, even a, a younger person, they find something that says, I had one of those. Or even they'll say, my dad had one of those. That's what I like about my gamer, is that I can start a conversation with anybody that comes in. And it's funny, you get people in, my uh, my wife might have her friends come in. They'll take one quick click, and then they walk along. Um, others might take a look for uh, five ten minutes, and uh, go through in different things, and then just move around. And once in a while, somebody comes in, and you can't get rid of them. They just look at everything and just bring in their memories that they bring in and explain why they had those things that they had those and that's the why I like all this stuff it is for me but it also makes me feel good to have people looking at this stuff all right so that's it for now I just wanted to give you another chapter two of my game room and hope it's not too boring and for now I'm gonna let you guys go for now this is Atkill, signing off.